So I was watching a video from a creator I watch often. His name is Maddie McTech. He does a lot of like little short videos. And he had this video about a ceiling fan. He said that almost 80% of people don't know that there's a little switch on the ceiling fan to reverse flow of that fan. And I, I didn't know this either, by the way. It got me thinking, I've never seen fans that do that also. So I went on the hunt and I found these guys right here. Now, man, these things are a fingerprint magnet. They do have the Lee and Lee kind of lock in effect here and they are quite nice they're a little on like the cheaper end of fans and as you can see here on the end right there there's a switch and this switch is bi-directional to have the fan spin this way or that way but in my opinion there could be a problem with that fan blades are designed to push air in one direction so to test these fans, we're actually going to be mounting them to that NZXT AIO right there. And we're going to be using this system. This is a X299 system with a 7820X. It's something we got on our last haul. Uh, I'll pin that video down below. It's a pretty good haul. Yes, there is mismatched memory. There's 64 gigs of mismatched memory in there. It's not going to be a big deal. I'm going to uh, set it to the lowest value. So I think this one's like 2666. So I'm sure you guys are probably like, why don't you name the fans? Well, here they are. It is the LTC CF. 123D 120mm PC case fan display chain connection reversible airflow 2000 RPM all right you get the point here uh, I want to mention a few things that I learned after the fact for an example this connection here there's only one that comes in the box so if you separate this fan you can't use this fan standalone and there's no other cables in the box so it's a little bit of a shame you have to run them in three by three currently for sale at $31.99 which is a great deal I would definitely pick this up at this price and they are as you'll see in the video not too bad also my buddy min dropped off this one of 500 kingpin card it's a 3090 ti with six eight pin connectors which is nuts i've never seen that before we're going to use this in the system just to help him test out the card beautiful card it is an aio sadly not a massive AIO fan, but hey, it's a kingpin. Now I am closely examining this and there is some scratches here. I don't think there's a peelable thing. Um, so Min, there are a few little scratches there. This actually hasn't been unpeeled. Kingpin likes to use a lot of gold. Back there, you can see all of the gold on the PCB. And then we got two, the original 12 volt high power cable uh, connectors. Actually, this was the upgraded version, um, but the cable is only, does not have the total 16 pins. It's only 12 and 12. And we're gonna be using this computer case. It's a Rosewill computer case. The ACA501, uh, not a sponsor, just got this really cheap on um, Newegg, I believe it was. All right, so what's gonna be kind of interesting about this setup here is that this card is not staying in here. This setup is actually gonna be for the X299 system permanently, as in I'm gonna be selling it someday down the line when I find a proper video card. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount the EVGA 3090Ti rad up top here. And the reason why we're gonna do that is because I want the radiator for the CPU out here. There's no restrictions. I thought about mounting it at the top, but the thing is, is that heat rises and that might actually cause an issue with the temperatures. So I wanna give it an even shot that fan blade design going both directions, pulling and pushing. And so the idea is to test it, have it all built and then have it hanging out in front. This GPU is incredibly hard to hold because of the AIO and the GPU, but I just wanted to mention, why didn't more manufacturers just do this? I mean, Kingpin, you kind of were smart here. You included the 212 volt high power connectors. Although this is a pain in the ass with six cables, what the hell? This is just way better. Like you're not gonna have any problem. The connectors are awful close to each other on the PCB. So maybe that could cause some issues. I don't know, I'm not an engineer here, but, um, yeah, so pretty, pretty nice. This is what a 5090 should have on it. It should be two of these. It's really not that much cable you can see there. So yeah, I mean, really smart Kingpin. Why don't you come back and join another computer company to uh, continue your legacy because we miss you. For now we're just gonna remount this to the radiator. One thing that kind of is annoying is that there is no thing here to protect the uh, mirrored finish, so you can very easily scratch these fans, and they should probably, uh, I don't know, include some 
little washers or something. So apparently the microphone was sitting right next to me, so the audio is not great, but let me explain what's going on here. I decided I'm actually going to leave the radiator out of the case for the EVGA card as well. So there's going to be zero radiators in the case whatsoever. And again, I'm just building an open air test bench, killing two birds with one stone for a future computer sale. So we are going to be using my test bench ROG Thor 1200. And yes, the fan is going to be facing up so I can see the uh, LCD on the other side. But it's not staying in this case. It's just temporary so that we can test that 3090 Ti. All right, so a few things I did real quick. Um, I actually just left 32 gigs in instead of having all four DIMMs. It doesn't really matter for this test. Ideally, you want four DIMMs in this board that are matching because that's how X299 is. Another thing, for some reason, the NZXT light in here is not showing up. So maybe an issue with software, I am not sure. All right, so right out of the gate, I wanna show you guys these two different fan blades here. So this one here is a reverse and this one here is a traditional, which the air moves that way. And this one, the air is moving this way. So this is what you get in an APNX uh, pack and you get these two different fan blades you can pop on and off. So that's what made me really curious about this design. How are they gonna be able to have proper aerodynamics without having a proper blade uh, pushing the air with the fins reversed? And you're gonna notice if I stop this fan, it looks an awful lot like that design. Also, it makes a ton of noise and does not like to be stopped, which is interesting. There we go. So one thing about AIOs is that eventually they will normalize temperature-wise, depending on how long you run them for, but it does actually depend on the fans and the, the pump speed and all that stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the 10 minute Cinebench R23 run, and I'm just gonna do that with the traditional fan direction, and then I'm gonna reverse the fans and run the same test just to see what happens. I'm also gonna pay attention to when the temperatures start to change at the five minute mark. Let's see where it's at and so on and so forth. All right, let's go for the first run. All right, we're already jumping to around five minutes and we are at 62C currently at five minutes. So we're gonna test that again with the fans in reverse, but these temps are looking really, really good. All right, guys, I'm sorry that I keep calling this an i9. It's an i7-7820X. We're on the final minute here. We have 40 seconds left and we really have not changed our temperatures at all. We're still sitting at 62, 63 and uh, it's looking pretty good. Maybe we need to overclog this thing. We got a 10,404. All right, we're gonna flick the switch. Fans should stop and then start spinning the other direction. And again, we're gonna go for the 10 minutes and I'll stop it at the five minute mark and show you guys, or show you guys at five minutes and see what the difference is. So just as I thought, this is pretty intense here. Five minutes in, or 533 and we're already at like 68 and we hit a maximum of 69 degrees so that's quite a difference in the numbers we were at around 62 and the temperature in the room is the same uh only running this for like 10 minutes my house is pretty cool so it's not like everything is massively changed here so 69c maximum and roughly sitting around 67c so 62 to 63 versus 67 68 that's quite a bit Let's see what it's at at the very end. All right, again, we are on our final minute here. We got about a minute and 10 seconds left, and we are averaging about 68 to 69 C. So about five degrees different than having the fans go in the other direction so far. The score was basically the same with margin of error. Jumping over to gaming, I didn't actually expect the results to be this close, but they were only about one degree off or two degrees at most from each other. There was one thing I did notice, a little more spiking on the reverse or pull configuration. So randomly you'd see like a three degree jump and then it would dive back down to two degrees. I'm sure if you had a higher end CPU pushing this thing harder, you might be able to see a larger gap in this range of performance. Right now I currently only have this to work with, but it is telling and shows that either way, the fans are doing a pretty decent job. So I know a lot of people are not playing Black Ops 7, but I was playing this a little bit and got some results for you guys too. 61 and 63C, that's the difference, not big, push on pull. 
I also jumped over and did a little bit of Battlefield 6 testing. And again, not a huge difference. This one was a little bit bigger, I guess you would say, on Conquest at 64 and 67. But overall, these are sort of boring results, I guess you would say. Prime 95 was acting a little bit weird and not hitting 100%, but it did have a 55 degree push configuration and a 59 degree pull configuration. I think something is definitely up with this benchmark or, or something is up with Prime 95 and I'm gonna have to look more into this. So don't take the Prime 95 results as 100%. So I did come across another set of fans that have that similar option. As you can see here, these are the XPGA data fans and you have a standard and reverse with a button. They also seem to include a individual wire for each that hooks up. It has the daisy chain ability. And yeah, I mean, it looks like they're actually kind of doing it a little bit better. I would say that this company in general is a decent manufacturer. The problem is though, depending on where you are, I looked through all of these and none of them have any fans listed at all. So even their actual main website here, if I go to xpg.com, there's nothing here. There's no fans. We have, I don't know if maybe if we go to PC components. Uh, yeah, there's a couple fans right here, but not the one that we're looking for. And I'm sure if you keep digging through, maybe you'll find something, but I have not been able to find it thus far. So my final opinion on these. So my final opinion on these fans are they are pretty cool right now at $30. If you're going to if you're going to do two sets, maybe like you have one radiator and another radiator and you're more going to be using this configuration where you're pushing, not pulling. Um, these are great when you switch over to the pull you're losing performance, it just doesn't matter. So if you like the convenience of it, it's not a terrible deal at 30 bucks. They're powerful enough. They kept the CPU pretty cool. Granted, it's a little bit older. I think the best test, which I don't have any like higher end CPUs at the moment, I might hold on to these fans if, and or I'll order another set or something. And if I get another high end CPU that I can test it on, I'll, I'll do another rerun of this and let you guys know. That being said, look at this. This is a pack of infinity style fans that are all very decent quality i've used them many times they have great performance and they come in a pack of seven for 30 usd exchange that for wherever you are and you have things like a forward fan and a reverse fan so they give you three reverse or yeah three reverse and four forward that way you have a uh, a really nice configuration there and like this is 30 bucks for this whole box versus 30 for one set of questionable fans that you can only kind of do and configure in one way. So I think that's gonna probably do it for this week's video, guys. Um, sorry I don't have anything crazier. I was extremely sick this whole weekend. So uh, yeah, didn't get to do any hunting for computers or anything. So yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. I do have a few things coming up. If you're interested, stick around and listen. Um, I actually have, so this company KTC sent me out a monitor uh, weeks, weeks back, and it was it was featured in another video, and I actually loved that monitor. I still have it, and I'm still using it. They hit me up again. Uh, surprisingly, the video didn't even do that well, and they hit me up again, and they were like, hey, we have another monitor. Do you want to review it? And this time, I actually feel a little obligated to review it fully because it is a very quality screen, and I've actually had it since November. They were cool enough to send it over, and they were like, hey, no pressure. Just uh, do your thing. Um, I am going to send them a video before I have it go live, but I told them it's just going to be my own opinion and uh, I'll, get, I'll get to the details in a little bit, but it's an, a mini LED screen and they, I'm blown away by it. Let's just be really uh, simple, simply put here. And uh, yeah, I've had a lot of high end screens. Um, I'm going to be moving my 4K screen up over there for the future. So no more 1440p. I'll do 1080p, 1440p and 4K all on one test bench. So that's kind of exciting for the channel. Um, yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting. Uh, stick around for that review. Hopefully, you guys can check it out. And yeah, I'll see you guys in another video. Bye.